Hi, this week in Small Shed I'm going to show you how not to make a bowl without a lathe. Well, as you probably know, um, myself and an awful lot of other people took part in Keith Brown's Make a Bowl Without a Lathe Challenge last week. Um, and I produced something that was vaguely bowl shaped um, and I thought I'd at least fulfilled the brief. What I didn't show at the time was the journey that took me there. And in fact, it was probably more interesting taking that journey to get to the finished result than actually um, making the bowl itself. So I'm just going to recap over that this week and get a little bit of free, uh, free entertainment out of it because I've already got most of the footage there from the fails. Right, you'll have to excuse the rain falling on the roof, one of the pitfalls of the small shed I think is that I get a lot of noise from the roof. Uh, this is the first day it's rained for about seven or eight weeks and it's been for England very hot over the last five or six weeks. So it's a welcome relief to me but it's uh, probably a bit of a background noise for you so I'm sorry about that. Um, what I thought I'd do is start with a bit of context for this whole video itself and the channel. Um, I, I finished the shed itself in uh, or April 2018, at the end of April. And at the end of May I decided it might be an idea to start doing some fitting out as I was starting to move equipment out of the garage uh, and I needed to store things. And on the 26th of May I made the fateful decision that I could probably start a YouTube channel and record what I was doing. Um, probably foolishly but these things happen and I started to go from that point uh, I've got no equipment I've got no ability I've got no editing software so I had to sort of make do and mend a little bit and I'm still doing so but I've got a, a tablet which I thought would probably record what was happening so uh, rather than just lose it I thought I'd start and then I could go on from there and the intention was always to try and get some content built up and then release videos probably from the end of August September time and launch the channel then. Now on the 20, 24th of June Keith Rag and Bone Brown launched his Bowl with Adel Faith Challenge and I saw it as a, an unashamed way of climbing on the bandwagon and using somebody who would got 50,000 subscribers um, to be able to see what I was doing in a, in a view, help to try and help build the channel. Which I think was part of Keith's idea. I mean, it wasn't entirely... Uh, it was to help other YouTubers and for that I'm very grateful. And that left me with a problem. Uh, I was on holiday from that Saturday that it was launched until the 4th of July. The challenge expired on the 27th of July. What that effectively meant, meant was that I'd got about three weeks in which to get some content made, get some content loaded onto the site because there's no point in trying to advertise a channel that's got nothing on it people aren't going to be subscribing to something with no content. Um, I'd got no channel identity, I'd got no means of editing video um, and as I said before I've got no ability so it was a fairly tight three weeks to get something up which I managed to do. We've got a, a couple of videos up and that left me also in that time to make the bowl. And 
in addition to not having any ability with regards to audio, video and editing, I haven't got a fat lot in woodworking either. Um, as I've mentioned in one or two other videos, I'm a wood butcher. I can saw 4v2 and if I've got a machine I can saw it at right angles. But that's about the limit of it. Um, but the whole point of the challenge is to, I think, is to push people. And wow, well, this pushed me in a lot of ways. It meant in that three weeks I'd, I'd learnt to sort myself out an editing programme. Um, I've hopefully improved some of the aspects of the, the videoing itself. Um, with a little bit of feeding in new microphones and things like that. Um, and so that's pretty much where we were. But that three weeks sorting the bowl out was a little journey for me on, on that separate direction as well. I started off looking at the um, ways in which I might do it and I think the first thing that came along that looked as if it was suitable was doing a, a scroll saw bowl. And in the garage I had a scroll saw. How hard could it be? Well, as you'll see, it wasn't very easy at all. Well, this is the scroll saw. It was something I bought second hand with a vague view to wanting to be able to do something with it in the future. Um, I didn't know much about it, I didn't know anything about scroll sawing at all anyway, but I had seen an awful lot of YouTube videos in that period which gave me the idea that if I tilted the bed um, and I found out how to work out how much it would need to tilt and all that sort of thing, I, I didn't have any confidence in my ability to cut a circle with it. So I thought the first thing I could do would be to make a jig that would fit on there and have a cut out for the saw blade itself, route a slot in there, put some aluminium angle in that I've got and have a sliding adjustable pin that I could then use the blade at right angles and carve the circle. So far so good. I've subsequently got a bandsaw which would probably have eaten the challenge but that only arrived yesterday. So we started off, we cut out the um, back of the timber as I required it to be to fit underneath and then I got the router out which again I'd not used since I'd had it and started to route a, um, a groove and immediately it becomes apparent that I had a problem. A I didn't know what I was doing and B I was learning all the time that the gauge the material itself that I was using was about an inch thick. I routed along and then I put the piece of material in as a spacer and did it again and then realised immediately that that makes the whole gap, um, the width of the router too wide. So that was the first one, that one out, went out the window. So we threw that one away. And then I had another go. And we got a bit closer this time. I got the right width this time and even with uh, a little bit of, I, everything was clamped down but even then it still managed to just catch the uh, edge of the router and make it a bit wider at the bottom so that one was a bit of a failure. That one was more of a cosmetic failure because it would have worked but somehow it didn't seem right to uh, put a video up of something that was quite as horrendous as that. So that one went out the window. I was running out of timber by now. <coughs> we ended up with effectively the right Thing. I had a machine uh, or a piece of wood that I could clamp down to the plate base of the machine. It had a sliding pin on it that had a, an allen socket or a screw in there that would lock it down and I could then get a piece of material with a hole in it and run it round. And that was going to be it. It was as easy as that. I'd solved the problem. <laughs> Yeah, well, certainly I would have hoped to have done better than my initial, that's my initial um, attempts without doing it by hand, uh, without any machinery at all, and that in itself is pretty woeful. So I got this new jig. Well, that didn't go well either. That is not what I would call a circle. Um, I got the angle all right, but everything else was wrong. So, 
pail number three or four. I was beginning to lose track by then. And because the blade was wandering a long way and because I was incompetent, I decided that the mix of the two was just not going to work. So I then had to start and think about other things. And that's where the journey of YouTube was has become quite interesting. Because the next thing I started looking at, purely by accident, was somebody had made a um, mallet head using compressed HDPE, which is the stuff plastic bottles are made of. Um, and they'd heated, uh, shredded this up, heated it up, and compressed it between two sheets of wood. And I thought, if I could find the right sort of mould, I could probably use that sort of thing. And somebody else was using Lego at the time for it. So I decided, yeah, I could put up a video that said I'm making a bowl out of Lego and not tell anybody that it was going to be melted Lego. So I dug out some pieces of Lego, put them in the oven for about half an hour on 170 degrees, got them out and they were pliable and compressed them between two bits of wood. And sure enough, it's actually given me um, quite a nice piece of solid plastic material. It was about a quarter of an inch thick. Um, but again, I, somehow it didn't inspire me particularly well. Um, and I decided that to make a bowl, firstly I'd need a former and, and then also I'd need quite a lot of Lego and stink the house out putting this stuff in the oven. So although it was a viable sort of possible starting point, um, it wasn't going to be the answer. So that one was again considerably uh, going to be a fail. And at that point when I'd been out shopping, um, I called into a pound shop just to have a look and see what they'd got. And I found some stainless steel bowls, pound a piece. I thought that might be the answer to my problems. I could use them to compress things and make the bowl shape. And from then on, um, I don't know whether I've got a piece of it now. One of the things I thought of, yes, here's a piece, was to weave plywood into a lattice, which I appreciate wouldn't fit very well there, but I thought if I steamed it, I might be able to get it sufficiently pliable to be able to put the lattice across there and squash it inside. Um, but I hadn't got any really nice plywood in, in the sort of quantity I'd need to be able to, to rip the strips. So that was shelved, but it's still a possible future think about. And then things started to get probably as weird as they ever will. Um, because I found somebody that was using styrofoam to make styrene with. And what I did was to get some butanone, which is methyl ethyl ketone. Quite inflammable, not the sort of thing to be playing with in the house too much. And I got a knife <coughs> and some blue styrofoam and I cut it into lumps. Let's see what happens here. You pop them into that and it fizzes and just down onto there, you can see it starts to dissolve. And what you end up if you if you pile enough styrene into the butanone, you end up with a gooey sort of a blue mess. That I thought I might be able to mould onto the bowls. And sure enough. That was what I ended up with, which was the, the first test piece. 
Now it's not particularly um, useful in that I would have needed to have spent an awful lot longer on it and I didn't know how long it was going to take for the solvents to dissolve. Um, so I had to abandon the idea purely and simply from a time point of view. But I have to say that's the sort of finish I got. It's like a bubbly translucent colour. It's really quite interesting. It's, it's a beautiful colour. It's a turquoisey blue. It's translucent and I think if I'd have done a complete bowl it would have been sufficiently interesting to have uh, complied.